For the unfamiliar, the thought of Russia might conjure images of vodka-swilling men in fur hats or spies from a Hollywood movie. But look past the stereotypes and you'll discover a country of deep tradition and a passionate national identity. But that's only the beginning when you look a little deeper. 20 Unsettling Discoveries in Russia Nobody Can Explain The Martian Child Nuclear threat is a constantly looming fear that's been the source of a lot of tension in the world, especially during the Cold War. But one Russian child named Boriska thinks that he alone can put an end to that. He's impressed the world with his astronomical knowledge about Mars and the known galaxy at just age 11. But he also seems to believe that he's a Martian himself. He claims that he was only reborn on Earth to start a fresh new life cycle and that his previous race went extinct due to a nuclear war thousands of years ago. His claims go as far as saying that his existence is a warning to us Earthlings, that there are clues pointing out what could happen to Earth is the same thing that happened to Mars long ago. And he thinks it'll happen soon. But just why should we listen to this over-imaginative child? Couldn't he just be playing make-believe? Well, he's been described as a genius child before, and his parents say that he was able to hold up his own head at just the age of two weeks, which is quite impressive for an infant. The doctors also confirmed that he could speak at only a few months and was able to read and draw at an age of just a year and a half. They labeled him as an extremely shy young man with above average intelligence. But this kid only seems to care about saving Earth. Is there merit to his claims and memories of another life? Or is it just a prank that he might have even tricked himself into believing? And if he can somehow stop nuclear warfare, why not at least let him try? Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. What a camera captures in Russia shocked the whole world. Welcome to the remote, top secret military base Kapustin Yar, the Soviet Area 51, where the wreckage from UFO crash incidents and their occupants were transported and studied between 1945 till now. More than 75 years ago in 1946, Soviet Russia established this place as the testing ground for its fledgling space program. It was one of humanity's first big steps toward the stars. A string of Soviet orbital feats followed as Russian scientists put the first dog, man, and artificial satellite into space. But as you can see, apparently it's a real hot spot for aliens. Various theories claim that the underground hangars keep the remains of at least eight alien aircraft. It's said that the Russians had access to advanced alien technologies that gave them the advantage over the United States in the field of space exploration decades ago. But of course, these are common theories and nothing more. All in all, the Russian Area 51 remains in question for the time being. It's easy to believe that such an important facility could have been home to classified projects in the past. It probably is to this day. And if this little blue alien-like being actually visited Russia, we're glad it was captured on camera. What about you? Comment below using hashtag sweet topic. Skull of beauty. Not all bone structures are the same, but they're definitely not designed to be this different. These elongated skulls held in the Bavarian State Archaeological Collection have made some researchers question their true origins. But a theory has come up on where they might have originally came from. While they look like something more alien than not, the DNA samples taken from the bones have suggested that not only were they fully human women, but they were likely high-ranking, treaty brides from Bulgaria and Romania. These women were intentionally held as bargaining wives to solidify political alliances and settle territory disputes. The bones have been dated to 500 CE, along with other similar skulls seen throughout medieval Europe and Asia. The elongated skulls were buried alongside regular-shaped skulls too, meaning there may not have been much discrepancy in the post-burial stages. But what is it that made these skulls so stretched out? One idea is artificial cranial deformation. It's a thankfully forgotten practice where a still-forming infant skull is bound until their heads grow into the constricted shape. One might consider it a form of torture, or at least intentional disfigurement but it was a tradition that was practiced across the an but it was a tradition that was practiced across the ancient world cultures from all over had similar instances of body transformation from central asia to various parts of europe 
In Romania, it was even popular for men to have these types of skulls and not just the high-ranking women. But if there's one positive look to this type of practice, it's definitely that we aren't still doing it today. The Old Dolmen In Egypt and certain parts of South America, ancient pyramids were built as the ultimate tomb for the powerful and elite. But in Russia, a lot of tombs were made purely out of giant stones. These stone structures are called dolmens and are essentially megalithic tombs. And on the slopes of the Caucasus Mountains of Russia, there are at least 3,000 of them. Surprisingly, only about 6% of them have been investigated so far. But there are plans to continue breaking and entering into these ancient graves at a later time. The local residents refer to the megaliths as houses of the dead in their own language. They're dated somewhere between the 2000 to 3000 BCE range and have been repurposed at various stages of culture. But throughout time, they've acted as burial tombs, then recycled to be different burial tombs. Most, if not all of them, have been long plundered of any treasures and some of the stone huts were used as blast chambers post-World War II. But in practice, the domains are simple constructs. They were built out of sandstone and limestones, that were easy to cut into proper forms. The most effort came in when heavier slabs were carried over to form the base or roofs of the tomb. Evidence of bronze chisels and other tools have been traced to their origins, giving us a look at how ancient cultures of the area would construct things. Domains are almost always placed upon flat plateau, sometimes on their sunny sides and other times on top of hills. More often than not, they're oriented for astronomical cult purposes, at least today, we can appreciate them for their fine craftsmanship. A chilly dog Russia is essentially a giant frozen tundra, so to say that some things freeze over in the giant country of ice would be an understatement for sure. But this unique case involves a fully frozen dog, a puppy preserved in the eye after 18,000 years, to be exact. The canine was discovered in a lump of frozen mud near the city of Yakits, according to one source. It also had unusually well-preserved hair teeth, eyelashes, and whiskers that were fully intact. The petrified puppy was so well-maintained that it almost looks like a toy version of the real thing, rather than a prehistoric preservation. It has all of its limbs, fur, and teeth in nearly the same conditions as when it was still alive. But this wasn't necessarily a great find from the Russian region. It was actually a conscious decision to unfreeze the frozen relic as a result of climate change. The sources of the story say that everyone in the world is involved because the ice that once held the frozen dog is no longer cold enough to stay frozen and undisturbed. Similarly, this method of unearthing frozen artifacts has also been used intentionally to discover mammoth tusks in the wild. Severe melting has had an impact on a lot of previously hidden treasures that some countries like China are trying to take advantage of, so it almost reduces their motivation to combat the constantly changing climate. Scientists that are also studying the iced dog are still trying to determine more about its former life, specifically what breed it is. It's unknown if it's closer in species to a dog or a wolf, given the hundreds and hundreds of generations of evolution, so more in-depth studying is still necessary. Sinkhole City Hopefully you've never experienced a sinkhole in person because they're downright terrifying. In case you were unaware, a sinkhole is defined as a depression in the ground without any type of natural external surface drainage. It essentially means that when a huge amount of water gets absorbed into the ground below and there isn't any support for the softer ground to stay firm, the floor above will simply give in to the lack of a foundation. Then it all just sinks into a fresh new hole. One major incident took place in the Russian village of Dedilovo near the city of Tula. The sinkhole in question was a devastating size of 49 feet in diameter and 98 feet deep. That's about the same as a multi-story building worth at least several flights. But this hasn't been limited to just a single case in the same area. A similar catastrophic incident took place above Yurokalai Selimkans Potash mines. These large events seem to have been increasingly occurring over the last 30 years throughout the Perm region of Russia. Is it a coincidence that most of them take place in the same spots as many of the mines? Probably not. Almost all of the major sinkholes were in locations where abandoned mine shafts were only situated a few hundred feet below. One of the first incidents took place at the Bediznyki Potash Mine No. 3 in 1986. 
Between 1993 and 2005, there were several hundred small earthquakes that contributed to the collapse of the underground tunnel systems, and in 2010, a boxcar on a railway even sank into a newly formed pit below. To date, there's only been destruction and somewhere around 12,000 residents being forced to move to safer locations where the buildings are still above ground. Champs Fears Behold the land of the gods. Although it's hard to say for certain with how many other places around the world have also been called the land of the gods, but Champ Island in Russia's Franz Josef Land is definitely among them. It's one of those mysterious places where that many people like to visit along the many Arctic islands that make up the uninhabited archipelago. The reason why people associate it with gods is because of the practically immovable giant stone balls littered across the shore. It looks like a soccer field for giants. The spheres aren't all humongous though. Some have been found that are even smaller than ping pong balls. The biggest one even reaches further than three meters in diameter or nearly 10 feet tall. It's still undetermined how the stone balls arrived on the island. No one lives there currently, so it makes sense that they would have to be dropped off somehow. But without any people or records around for miles on miles, the answers won't simply appear on their own. One major theory is that the stones are a type of concretions. That means they could be naturally formed masses of minerals that came about by a cementing sedimentary material that was carried by water and coming into contact with something organic, like grass or leaves. The chemical reaction shaped multiple layers of stone which come across as perfect spheres to us. It's a bit hard to believe that the shapes are completely coincidental, but they have occurred in other countries around the world and many archaeologists have cracked open into them hoping to find undiscovered fossils. But it's still kind of cool to imagine that gods once played games here instead. Colonized Greek Goods The Greek goddess Aphrodite is a well-known icon for love and lust in all of her depictions. While it isn't a surprise that lovers and people pursuing love often worshipped her in Greece, her image traveled far beyond the country's outer limits. Archaeologists from Russia managed to uncover an ancient Greek medallion made out of silver in the grave of a 2100-year-old priestess on the northeastern coast of the Black Sea. The medallion depicts 10 signs of the zodiac rather than the normal 12 and also showcases Aphrodite or possibly the Roman version called Venus. According to the researchers behind this discovery, it's suggestive that the woman buried with the medallion was likely an important priestess at the time of her death. She was also buried with rings, silver earrings, and plenty of other treasures dedicated to the idea of the goddess of love. There was also a tomb of a warrior that was buried as far back as the 4th century AD, near an enormous iron sword that seems to have had some Persian influences. Supposedly, all of these findings point to a lost city from Greek history, the colony of Phanagoria. Just being able to link these findings with Greek history has been an amazing stepping stone into uncovering other historical finds and answers that have eluded researchers for decades. Archaeologists assigned to the site have begun undergoing underwater excavations to find out more, but it appears that there's still quite a bit for them to uncover. Rise of the Frozen Worm One major flaw with hibernating in ice for thousands of years is that most living organisms tend to not make it past the freezing portion of the hibernation. It's almost impossible to preserve your life for the future if you die before your body is fully preserved. But that led scientists to a recent breakthrough that could possibly change the way of thinking. In Moscow, some Russian scientists have been working with a microscopic organism that seems to have been brought back to life after a deep freeze for over 24,000 years. Not only that, but it even managed to reproduce again after all this time. To be fair, it was an asexual reproduction, as some worms are known to do, but it's still quite an achievement for the science behind this case. The scientists found the tiny ancient animal in soil, taken from a river in Russia's northern region. The creature is called a deloid rotifer and was discovered in the river Alizea. It's a multicellular organism known for being able to withstand extreme cold which is likely what helped it to survive for all this time. Previously, it was thought that the organism could only survive up to a decade while frozen at negative 20 degrees Celsius. In comparison, 24,000 years is quite a big jump. 
The land it was taken from contained samples encased in permafrost where things have been frozen year-round and is a constant source of new scientific breakthroughs. Now, if we can just figure out how to deep freeze people for a few thousand years, we're sure there'd be at least a few willing to try it out. Intact Mammoth Russian scientists seem to be striking it big with these new discoveries in frozen wastelands. It turns out a lot of creatures and things have been frozen for a long time, meaning most of them are still mostly intact for studying. This specific find involved an amazingly well-preserved set of adult woolly mammoth bones. The creature roamed around this spot on Earth something like 10,000 years ago at least, but now we can learn more about it in depths. Its remains were discovered in the shallow section of a North Siberian lake. Among the parts that were found were a section of the animal's skull, as well as some ribs and foreleg bones that still had a bit of soft tissue attached. Researchers say that it's unusual to find this many pieces still so close together, especially after so much time has passed. But global warming might be the cause to thank for this kind of find. Due to the unusually warm temperatures these past few years, most of the previously unmeltable permafrost has begun to defrost. While this may lead to uncertainty in our own future, it's definitely been a blessing for uncovering the past. Scientists are still scouting the region for signs of other bones and fossils. So far, there's a lot to learn about the remains that have been discovered. While this set of bones are likely 10,000 years old, there have been some findings that are at least 30,000 years old. Hopefully, more discoveries like this are made and proven to be beneficial. That way, we at least get something good out of all this climate change. Whale of the Deep Mammoths aren't the only giant bones being discovered in Mother Russia. Spooky sea skeletons showed up on the shore one day and terrified the locals into thinking sea monsters were coming from the great depths below. The size and shape of the creature is definitely off-putting and doesn't look like any normal fish you would expect to find on the shore. After being picked up for analysis, initial tests had suggested that the skeleton wasn't any type of fish, alligator or crocodile. Of course, that kind of detail only caused more discourse and chaos as the public cried out for protection from and information on the mysterious sea creature. One theory was that it was a previously undiscovered ancient underwater creature. The original images were photographed by passing soldiers in 2006, but the results of what the creature actually was didn't come out until eight years later. As it turns out, according to marine specialists, the bones belong to a large beluga whale. Technically, whales don't qualify as fish for numerous reasons, and since the original study agreed with that deduction, it makes sense for it to be a whale after all. The skull was the most defining feature considering beluga whales are known for their strangely shaped foreheads. Everything else also fit the right description, so it was more of an unusual sighting rather than a never-before-seen discovery. While it doesn't disprove the idea of sea monsters existing off the coast of Russia, it doesn't look like any new evidence has come out of this notable event. Murney Mine What's mine is yours, and what's yours is mine. At least that seems to be the case with this giant man-made Murney Mine sometimes just called Mermine. It's one of the largest excavated holes in the world and even seems to pull in occasional helicopters just trying to fly by. The huge open pit is a Kimberlite diamond mine that was first discovered in 1955 by a Soviet excavation team. It's in the old Yakut Autonomous Soviet Socialist Republic, but currently the location is simply called Eastern Siberia. Active mining operations ended in 2001 although underground mining for diamonds picked back up in 2009. While technically the giant open pit doesn't have any records of actually sucking in helicopters out of the sky, there have been quite a few eyewitnesses testifying that it's true. There was a lot of misinformation going around in the late 20th century while the open pit was still a functional working space, so it might be impossible to track down accurate records of flights and accidents that could have happened. Maybe a helicopter or two did fly into the hole once, and that's where the legend was born. Noble Warrior's Tomb In most tombs, there are burials for the rich and elite and burials for time-honored warriors. But this Russian crypt seems to have an oddity out there by being both wealthy and a soldier. 
This ancient warrior came from a noble family and was unearthed in a 1,500-year-old tomb, along with his wife and three children. Experts think there's reason to believe that they were victims of a plague or possibly butchered by nomadic tribes. The team that found the bones in Fanagoria came from the Institute of Archaeology of the Russian Academy of Sciences. The remains of the man were found next to some riding stirrups and spurs along with a belt for his sword, so it's likely that he was a respectable member of the colonized army. The burial site itself is about 5 meters deep, or roughly 16 feet, and also had plenty of treasures that indicated the wealth and nobility of the family. There are many other tombs out there that still need searching if the scientists are going to uncover as much of the history as they can, but it will still take a long time. Half of the city is flooded, and underwater excavations are slow enough without having to deal with freezing cold temperatures, but maybe some of these finds will prove to be beneficial to understanding more of the Russian-Greek connection than we've ever had before. Hairy Sea Monster Unlike the skeleton of a beluga whale that was at least identifiable as some kind of aquatic creature, this hairy sea monster is making more of a splash for being almost completely undistinguishable. All that's known for sure is that it's incredibly foul-smelling and washed up on the Bering Seashore by the Pacific side of the Kamchatka Peninsula. It's supposedly three times the size of an average man, but you can't really tell where the top begins or the bottom ends because it has no noticeable features like eyes or a head. The body is covered in some kind of white and gray hair-like substance. According to the woman who found it, the beast's hair is pretty cool. On the record, she was quoted saying, The most interesting thing to me is that the creature is covered with tubular fur. Could it be some ancient creature? I wish scientists could inspect this enigma that ocean threw at us. One person on the internet reacted to her video by saying that it could be a dried-out woolly mammoth, but she disagreed. She thinks it looks more like a kind of hairy octopus. Then this led to the idea that it might be something called a globster. The term for such a species was coined in 1962 and used to describe a similarly mysterious carcass with no visible eyes, no defined head, and no apparent bone structure. What's more, the original globster was also described as matching a large octopus with tentacles and similar bone structure. The only difference that might be key to the whole thing is the excess hair. The Melting Fort The melted bricks of Fort Zverev is a compelling find for people with a penchant for the past. It sits near the shores of the Baltic Sea in northern Kronstadt in Russia. Currently, the fort is left in ruins but tourists continue to visit the area on their own. Two were from St. Petersburg. The fort is actually an artificial island that was constructed in the 19th century, sometime close to the 1860s. It's named after the man who engineered the whole location, Konstantin Zverev. The design was a new inspiration from him and unlike anything else he had ever come up with. It has a mushroom shape with a curved ceiling as well as asphalt as a building material, which was a Russian first for the time. By the turn of the 20th century, the fort had shifted into a sea mines warehouse as well as a dump for ammunition that lasted long into the post-World War II era. In the 1970s, the fort was caught up in a massive inferno that set the whole structure up in a blaze that lasted several weeks. By the time the flames had subsided, most of the damage was beyond repair. Even some of the bricks had melted down to a charcoal puddle. It's unknown what caused the fire to burn so intensely, but there have been theories that it was a weapon experiment gone wrong. But it still makes an exciting story for those who want to see a frozen site that was once burned down. Turn of the Sea Otters Here's some good news for all of the sea otter lovers in our audience. The fuzzy swimmers are making a return in droves with new studies on the population size. Between the 18th and 19th centuries were an unprecedented amount of ocean exploitation that led to whaling and fur trades across the globe. With so much in demand and only so many animals as resources, the ocean species took a nosedive until the populations nearly collapsed. Once the 20th century rolled around, the number of known otters in the world has shrunk down to the low thousands after a peak of nearly 300,000. The sea otter was an unfortunate casualty in many of the northern and eastern bound trades of the North Pacific. 
Their waterproof fur was in high demand for its versatility and the density that can't be matched by any other mammal. For a fun fact, every square inch of their body has about a million small hairs, around a thousand times the density of us humans. They also have a microscopically small and spiky texture that allows them to insulate unlike any other creature. So, in other words, their fur does make some of the best winter coats money can buy. Fortunately, protection efforts came out before everyone could get a hold of some of their skin. Otters are finally starting to repopulate back to numbers close to where they once were, but as long as hunters and fashionistas don't get in the way, they're bound for a full recovery. Tornado of Bugs the only thing worse than an oncoming tornado has to be this different and even more terrifying version that's made up entirely of swirling mosquitoes. Why would nature even let such a disaster like this come into existence? What's more, the locals to this site claim that these mosquito tornadoes are just an annual trouble that happens every year in Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula. It's like heading into a plague of locusts from the biblical tragedies. One of the people who managed to film this apocalyptic event said that he couldn't see how high up most of the creatures flew. It looked to him like most of them rose up and went past the clouds. The swarms would fly at each other and build these menacing looking towers that were established and dissipated all in just a few brief moments. These tornadoes are actually a rare scenario where the male mosquito seeks to take a female mosquito partner along with them. All of the males band together while the females must fly into the swarm and pick a single male to leave with. It's pretty fascinating and maybe even a bit romantic. But why do we have to watch such a nightmarish scene in public? A branded polar bear. Polar bears have a white furry coat as a means of camouflage in the Arctic winters. But this special and clearly visible bear made headlines across social media for the T-34 symbol painted across its body. Wildlife experts were disturbed by the scene and quickly discussed all of the negative effects placed on the bear because of this. One researcher named Anatoly Kochnev from the Institute of Biological Problems of the North said that it might take weeks before the symbols will come off. The distracting paint would likely prevent the creature from performing its natural hunting duties by stopping it from blending into the environment. Another person said that it looks like a bad joke but what does the T-34 actually mean? Some think it refers to a T-34 Russian tank from World War II. But the truth is that it's a reference to the grid on the map of the Arctic archipelago. The bear was officially marked by a group of scientists from the Servetsov Institute of Ecology and Evolution. This bear specifically continued to visit the dumping area that it was not allowed to be in. So the experts sedated marked and moved the animal to a distant location. The symbol will let them know if the bear wanders all the way back to them, but it's intended to fade away after just a couple of weeks. So it may not be a prank or named after a tank, but in a way, it's almost like a form of punishment. Hopefully, the bear was still capable of taking care of itself with or without the aided camouflage. Ancient Big Idol one of Russia's oldest and most notable treasures is a one-of-a-kind Big Shigir idol. According to the German scientist that dated it, the results are twice the age of the Egyptian pyramids and over 15,000 years older than previously suspected. They claim that the number is sensational and different from the other attempts at dating the wooden monument. The first attempt took place in 1997, a full 107 years after it was first discovered. The radiocarbon analysis of the time assumed the idol was 9,500 years old, but that number was heavily disputed in the scientific community. The results were ordered to be retaken, this time in more advanced facilities held in Mannheim, Germany at one of the world's most advanced laboratories. It used accelerated mass spectrometry on seven tiny samples taken from the woods, but this time, instead of 9,500 years of age, it was recorded at being at least 11,000 years old. The sculpture apparently came from the very beginning of the Holocene Epoch, but was also made from a larch that was at least 157 years old. There are still more details to the idol aside from its ancient age, but so far we can say that this means the Big Shigir idol is definitely the world's oldest wooden sculpture to date. 
It also confirmed that hunters and fishermen created works of art in a similar way to the ancient farmers of the Middle East. It seems like all people at all times of history have liked art to at least some extent. Forgotten Fortresses There are a lot of secrets hidden within Russia's massive amount of land, but one of the lesser known troves of Russian history are all of the abandoned island fortresses. Many of them lasted for centuries to protect the nation from the seafaring enemies, but today they stand more as tourist attractions and open windows to a recent past that's almost been forgotten. Some of these bases were later used for military and scientific research purposes. Before being abandoned, Fort Alexander near St. Petersburg was once used as a research facility to study the Black Plague. It hardly functioned as a military base, so instead it switched responsibilities to understanding more about deadly viruses like cholera and the bubonic plague. Fortunately, the remote location prevented any of the diseases from spreading outside of its island walls. Unfortunately, all of the scientists contracted the various diseases they were studying. Today it seems like there hasn't been any official business on the island, and there's been a lot of illegal rave concerts. Among the many other fortresses are similar stories of both war victories, scientific exploration, or simple explosion sites to test war equipment. Not all of the sites are open to public visitation, but the ones that can offer a good deal of insight to what was once intended to be much greater. Blood Red River in Russia A stunning red river in Russia seems like the kind of tongue twister you'd expect to hear in a high school. But this is apparently a real phenomenon found by residents of the Arctic Circle. None of the bystanders were sure what to think of the Blood Red River flowing past them, but Russian authorities leapt to the case. The biggest suspect are the local metal plants since some minerals can influence the colors of water. The city of Norilsk already has a reputation for being a very polluted and industrial city, especially since it's the home of the Norilsk nickel, a nickel smelting plant that's just upstream. The Natural Resources and Environment Ministry eventually came out to say that the vibrant red color could have been caused by a break in a Norilsk nickel slurry pipe. Red is a typical color during a mine waste, so it does seem to be the most probable cause for the unusual site. David Chambers, the president of the Center for Science and Public Participation, said that the bright red colors is most likely due to oxidized iron that's in the waste being leaked into the water. When high temperature and pressurized oxidation processes occur, it can turn any sulfide minerals into iron oxide, which in turn makes water gain a blood red color. It still hasn't been proven, but until then, people are trying to stay clear of the river. The majesty of Russia is still full of an amazing amount of history and mysteries that are just waiting to be revealed to the world. We're going to keep our eyes out and ears peeled for the next round of discoveries and hopefully they'll turn up soon.